Hello everyone, this is Pippin Williamson with PippinThePlugins.com and I want to give you a quick review of the Easy Translation Manager plugin for WordPress. This is a plugin from the Right Here group uh, over at CodeCanyon.net and it is, a, it is a plugin that makes it really easy for you to translate your site into a multilingual website. So you could easily translate it into Spanish, Russian, Chinese, English, etc. All these different languages and you can pr provide your users ways to switch between what language is displayed. You can auto detect with which language their browser is using and then display it appropriately. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with this plugin that makes it really really cool. So anyway I'd like to walk you through the plugin really quickly. Once we have it activated, we have a new section over here called ETM settings for easy translation manager settings. And the first thing that I want to point out is that their welcome screen is really, really nice. Uh, one thing that I like about it a lot is they have followed the design and the layout of the new WordPress 3.3 plus welcome screen. When you update WordPress or freshly install WordPress now, you see a, a welcome screen that looks very similar to this. And I really like that because it helps keep within the core WordPress styles and layouts, etc. This welcome page also goes through and describes some of the basic uses of the function of the plugin, some of the main features, the the ways that you use it, and also support for uh, a few other things as well. Now, what we have underneath our ETM settings is plugin translation, theme translation, page translation, post translation, menu translation and options. So there are several different sections. First of all, there's a section for translating your WordPress plugins. So through this plugin, you can actually go in and translate plugins into any language you want. Let's say that you have a plugin that you really like, but unfortunately, it has not been translated into your particular language, whatever that may be. Well, through this plugin, you can actually go in and translate all of the text in the other plugin without ever modifying the, that plugin itself. And then you can that new plugin that you just translated will be displayed in your language. You can do the same thing with themes. You can also translate your page and your post content. And one thing that's really, really great about this is that it has complete support for custom post types as well. It hasn't neglected to just ignore those. We also have the option to translate menus, which is really, really nice. Um, the menu translation is something that a lot of translation plugins leave out, but this one is done quite well. So let's go and take a look and see how this general interface works. When we go to a section, let's go to plugin translation first, we're given a list of all of the plugins on our website. And I believe this is both active and non-active. And it will show you a couple of things. First of all, it'll show you the title, the folder that the plugin's stored in, the author, the version, and how far translated it's been. We can just right click over and go to all of the other plugins, just paginate it like this. Um, and so we can go into any individual plugin and let's go to easy digital downloads and once we're in one of the plugins we can now see all of the strings that we have ready for translation so we see all of these different text strings that are ready to be translated and we can see over here whether they have been translated and I have the, the languages Russian and Spanish enabled so when the flag is highlighted or not grayed out it means that this has been translated this one, for example, has not been translated. And if we decide to translate it, we can simply click on it. A little modal will pop up. And we see here's the original text. And then we type in our translation. And once we do that, this is the translation. We just simply click Save. And it's all, all done via Ajax. And it's going to tell us it's been saved. And now that translation has been saved. So that's really cool. Um, and the same thing applies to both plugins and themes. And then page and post are slightly different. So let's go and take a look at those. Let's go to page translation first. And first of all, you'll see that this just lists all of the different pages that we have. So let's go to a page first. And once again, we just click on the flag that we want to translate it into. Now this is really, really nice because what this has actually done is given us a complete rich editor for translating our content. So first of all, we can change the title to anything we want. So we'll just call this Spanish title and then say this is the Spanish content. I used to know Spanish pretty well, but I kind of lost it since college. So we'll just 
pretend that we're typing in Spanish. And one thing that's really cool here is that we can actually not only change the translation of the content, we can completely change the content. So you can go into HTML mode, visual mode, you can add images to individual translations. It's really, really cool. Um, we also have the ability to simply copy the text over. So it'll take it from the default and copy it over to the new translation. And maybe that's for if you're only doing a minor translation. We also have an extra section where we can actually go in and translate the excerpt as well as media alternate text and we can change the permalink for this the other translated item. So you can see this is the original permalink here. This is the URL for this. But if we wanted to, we could say a Spanish page instead. And now when this page is accessed, instead of going to slash WordPress slash a page, it's going to go to WordPress slash a Spanish page. And that's really cool. Let's go take a look at posts now. Posts are pretty similar, but slightly different. So inside of post, we first of all, we have post types. So you can see here's a list of all of the different post types that we have. We also have the post tags and the post categories. So let's go into the download post type. Now, once we've selected a post type, we see all of the items within this post type in the same way that we did inside of the page translation. And this works exactly the same way where we have the main content or the original content on the left, the translated on the right, and we have the option to do the extra fields as well. Now, let's take a look at menu translation. Menu translation is also really cool. We get a list of all of the nav menus that we have created. So these are the menus created under appearance and menus. So when we go into one, we now see all of the links on or for that particular menu. Go in and translate one. And we see the original title, the translated title, the original at title attribute, the tra translated one, and the original URL and the translated URL. So the translated URL is really cool because you could, there's a variety of things you could do. One thing, if you wanted to, you could actually pass URL parameters, like you see I have here, uh, question mark test, and you could use those for a whole variety of, of, of tasks. One particular thing that I can think of is that if you wanted to, if you were into this, you could actually track uh, the language that people view your site in. So you could very easily, anytime that a parameter is set, record a statistic. So anyway, that's the basic method of how you translate it. Now, let's go take a look at the options really quickly. First of all, in general settings, we can enable a few things. For example, we have a language variable, and this is the variable that you will see in the URL of your site when someone changes the language. So it defaults to LA, but it could be lang, language, or something entirely different. You can also add in a test IP, which allows you to actually, from that specific IP address or addresses, you can actually test the, the multilingual aspects of your site without making them live. You can auto detect the browser language. So let's say a user loads your site in, and their browser is set to Mandarin Chinese, and you have a Mandarin Chinese translation, it's going to automatically display in Mandarin. There's a couple of other things that you can do here that I'm just going to kind of skip over. Uh, the main one is you can set your default English, I mean your default language for both the front end and the admin. You can also choose to hide items that are not translated. So let's say that we're viewing the site in Mandarin and anytime that we have a post that has not been translated in Mandarin, we don't want to show it. We want to hide that because they shouldn't be able to see it at all. So we simply click post and now non-translated items will never be shown. Same thing here. You can actually go even further and hide um, based upon their status and whether or not they have the translations. You can hide plugins, themes, post types, etc. And those are the, the items available for translation. You can also remember that we have this list here. We can actually control how the items inside of that list show up. So by default, if we go to the plugins page, it's going to list them by title. But we want, if we want, we can list them all by author. So this way we're gonna see all authors 
by so-and-so first, and then the next author, and then the next author. And we can choose how to sort them. And we can do that with plugs, plugins, themes, pages, posts, menus, etc. We also included with the plugin is a menu language bar. Uh, it's a, basically a switcher that allows you to choose what language it is displayed in. And here we can control some of the styling and the layout of that menu. Uh, we can also control it in the dashboard as well. And I'm going to show you that here in a moment. And then lastly, we also have all of the different languages that we want to enable. So we see the most common, and these are kind of the world's most commonly spoken languages you see here, and we can activate or deactivate, enable it for the test IP, and activate it. We have each of those three options for each one. We also see over here, it tells us the language code and also the, uh, the language tag that is used anytime you pass the URL parameter. Then we also have a whole variety of other languages. Um, it's not quite all the languages in the world, actually not even close, but it's all of the, the primarily, primarily spoken languages. So now let's go over to our dashboard for a second. Here we have a new option that we can choose select language. So we can now choose to display our dashboard inside in any of these languages. So let's go to Spanish for a moment. We choose it and it refreshes. Now you'll note that my entire dashboard is in Spanish. And another thing to note is that if your plugin, let's take Easy Digital Downloads for a moment. If your plugin is already translated, in other words, it already provides the translation files for the chosen language, it's going to display it in that language. So Easy Digital Downloads has a translation file for Spanish. So it is displayed in Spanish, even though I haven't translated it through Easy Translation Manager. So that's cool because it means that ETM auto detects whether or not language a plugin is already translated and it's not going to need to translate it again. Now let's go back and let's put our site into, into Russian. Okay, so now we're in Russian and a couple things. First of all, Easy Digital Downloads does not have a Russian translation, nor do I have the WordPress language files for Russian installed. So everything is still in English, which means that I can now go in and translate anything I want into Russian via ETM. So let's go to Easy Digital Downloads. We're going to choose the plugin, and now we're going to go in and find something that hasn't been translated. So let's go, let's, let's go to the app. Um, add new price option. So I already translated this, but we'll translate it again just to show you. So the original text says add new price option. This is the Russian text. So it says a new option. I don't know Russian. I can't type Russian. So obviously this is not correct, but this is just a demo. So this, where this text displays should now say a new option. Let's go check it out. We'll hit save. And now we'll go back to our download section. We'll click on a download and it says a new option. This originally said add new price option, but because it has detected that we have chosen Russian as our language and we have this particular text string translated, we now see a new option instead. Let's go to the front end of the site. And I'm gonna go over to a um, kind of a blog archive and I have a widget set here where I can choose the language. So this is kind of the front end language switcher that someone can use to change the language that they are reading the site in. So let's change it to Spanish. Now you'll see that this, I translated this title to say Simple Notices Pro Spanish to indicate that it was in Spanish. I also added the text, this is the Spanish version. So I'm now reading everything in Spanish. Also note up here, this is where we see that URL variable where it says LA equals ES. You'll see that my menu that I translated, downloads Spanish, has also been translated. And if we click on it, Note the presence of the test variable. That's because I defined that this particular menu item should have a different URL than the original English version. If I go back to English now and I click downloads, that test variable is gone. So that's really, really cool. So Easy Translation Manager um, is a, it's a really robust plugin. It's built by excellent developers and it's on Code Canyon for $25. Now, there are some free plugins out there, WPML and QTranslate, for example, and I've used both of them. Personally, I would recommend Easy Translation Manager over those anytime. Um, those I've had issues with both Q 
Qtranslate and WPML, they both work, but they have some things that are kind of quirky about them. And I feel the Easy Translation Manager is does a, it does a better job at the way that it provides the methods for translation and the overall results and how well it really works. Um, you can always trust plugins from right here. They are a phenomenal group of developers. I've had the chance to personally meet uh, the primary guy in person. Um, his name is Richard. He's a great guy. Uh, and easy, so, but Easy Translation Manager is it's a really it's a good plugin. And honestly, I would recommend it to anyone.